What's up guys, Chad from the Dorky and 40 RC channel here. And today is going to be pretty much our last video in rebuilding the box stock Losi NASCAR. And all of these videos are super important, especially the shocks, maybe the diffs, not so much, but the bearing thing is a really important thing. It's so important that I've actually seen a couple racetracks saying that within the next couple of weeks, they're going to be teching to make sure that you don't do this, which tells me that they know that there are racers that have done this. And that is the reason why they are blatantly faster than some of the other people. And they're going to give them a couple weeks to fix their cars. I don't know how else to explain it. They could tech it right now tonight if they wanted to, but they're not choosing it. So that's just kind of unfortunate. And it's the bullshit that's going on with these classes which is why you're going to see something different with mine in the upcoming videos. You're also going to see in the next video, we're going to do like a basic starter thing that like every new racer should know, like what you're up against, what other people are probably doing to these cars and the little cheat codes and things that you can do. Not that I do them or anybody else does, but let's just say they're bending the rules that should allow you to be a little bit more competitive. Some of them can be teched. Some of them can't. I'm just putting it all out there. I want this class to be fun. I've always been a big proponent of keeping this class as box stock as possible until we find ways to make it better, especially for the new people. And you're going to hear more of my stuff coming up promoting that. And all of my stuff is pretty much supported with facts and data. And the facts and the data are in the comments of all the videos that you guys have left saying that your cars drive like shit. You've gotten rid of them. You've sold them. And I see it on Facebook. And then every once in a while, you get some smart ass that says that all of our cars are amazing. No, the whole point of this car is to get you to the track, have fun, experience RC racing, and then hopefully move into something else or want to. But if you drive a crappy car with crappy electronics and everything else, then your experience is just going to be poisoned and you're not going to ever want to do it again. Trust me, believe me, it gets way better than this. Even though this is great, people are going to say you're, I'm shitting all over a $190 car. I totally, totally get where you're coming from. But again, I am a huge advocate for this car, but the car has a lot of problems in some people's cars, maybe don't. And there's also a problem with the racing, you know, like people who've been racing cars for 25 or 30 years are buying these and racing against people that have never raced before. You guys are, you hold the power. If you are a novice and you are brand new, you tell your race director, I heard that three make a class. I want a class of novice racers. I don't want to race with the guy that's running a 21.5 tour truck that's out here kicking ass with his $1,200 car and then coming and kicking my ass with his Losi NASCAR. I want to race with like fellows. If they don't want your money, then maybe that's not the place for you. Some race directors are smart. They're all about business. Some racetracks are built on to hobby shops and they have more of a benefit to say, hey, tell you what, take this $20 ESC, take this $50 radio, and I bet your car will run a lot better because guess what? They sure do a lot better. So, and you'll see in the upcoming videos. Anyway, do this, I guess, with caution, knowing that some people are probably already doing it and some places might not allow it and they might tell you that you can't run your car. I don't know. So if you're a new guy and you go asking around and stuff like this, my point is, is don't say nothing until you're told to. So it'll be our little secret here on the channel and go and have fun with it. It definitely should make a difference to the car. Um, taking these bearings apart at all over the areas, you'll see issues that I have found in other areas on some of the assemblies. And again, like, the bearings that I buy that are, you know, whatever for my, you know, built purpose, built tuned setup left turn only truck, the bearings don't have shields on them and they're cheaper and just as good as quality as paying 
more money for the ceramic type of bearings that still have shields, but they're a little bit more tougher and they're pre-lubed and stuff like that. There's so many different quality of bearings. Like one size does not equal all, but trust me, these things are less than a penny. I'm sure for a low C to throw into their car. Um, and definitely I'll say it in the video a couple times, you're going to need to dedicate some time to this because if you really want to do this, you're going to have to take your entire car apart and definitely be careful. Give yourself some space, line all of your stuff out, pull up the instructions, all that kind of stuff. So it's very important. So that way you can get everything put back together very easily. I'm always here if you have any questions or comments, and if you really appreciate what we're doing on here on the channel, you can all see, send a super thanks, um, or you can buy something off of one of the Amazon affiliate links down below. So here you go, 20 minutes worth of bearing stuff. Peace. So this video is going to be one of the most important things probably that you can do to speed up the car and also just double check that everything is okay with the car and you're going to basically have to take the entire car apart. And really what we're going to do and focus on is trying to make sure our drive train is smooth. You're definitely going to want to go online here and find the exploded parts view to help you guys out. I've taken a lot of things apart in this car and I have the low C playlist series up here. Check some of the more recent videos, especially the series video that I'm doing. Maybe I'll create a, a separate playlist for that. We've done shocks, diffs. Now we're doing the entire drivetrain. So what do I mean by the entire drivetrain? Obviously, the main thing is pulling off the front, the back of the car, and we want to get this drive shaft out. We want to get off all of our you know knuckles and arms with all of our bearings and dog bones and all that kind of stuff. And there's a couple things that we want to do. We want to pull all of the shields off of our bearings, which is a speed secret thing that oval racers and really any racers are doing constantly. These bearings aren't the best thing. The shields inside of them are cheap. They warp and they cause a binding issue. Like, for example, I've got one of these apart from the front and I have went ahead and redid this one super smooth now the other side is totally ratcheted and actually will bind up sometimes so we've definitely found another issue on the front but this should be something that we can correct do keep everything organized and take your time this is not going to be something that is super fast and you don't even have to do it all at once if you want to just focus on the front or the rear and then come back and maybe do the drive shaft that is fine the rear is definitely easier to do than the front and i don't know why but getting the front axle hubs out of here is very difficult these things are threaded on here super tight and getting the bearings and everything in and out of this front hub is pretty difficult you're going to have to use some kind of force and make sure you remember that there is some camber built into this so you know don't hold it flat like this you need to hold it where the actual axle is pointing towards the sky so that is going to be the first thing that we're going to do and to start off with, when I talk about bearing shields, we'll show you that if you haven't seen the diff video, why that is so important. To get all this stuff apart, you're gonna definitely need things like some shock pliers, maybe a couple pair of shock pliers, some other pliers type of things, whatever. You're gonna want some kind of bearing lube or something for your bearings to re-lube them, and that's pretty much about it. You're going to also just, again, need some time. So my car is entirely stripped down. We've got our instructions, and I've went through and done the rear already and everything else. So now let's focus on this front difficult one here that is totally bound up. Now, this hex on here is actually slotted in on the actual... I guess you could call it the axle holder is what I'm going to call it. And this inside here is a rotating CVA joint. So you can also grease that while you're in there as well. 
So in order to get this entire assembly off, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to basically hold this dog bone right here really tight because you have to unthread these. And I found the best way is just with a couple pair of shock pliers or you can use regular pliers and you got to really, you got to really get in there and hold this thing tight. Let's see if I can just do it by hand a little bit. And it's, it's I don't know why they had to make this thing <laughs> so freaking tight, but it just is what it is, I guess, at this point. Once you get it going, it's not too bad. If you have two pair of shock pliers or maybe a pair of channel locks or something, you can grab on and hold on to this hex right here. And then you can grab the actual axle and you can start to unthread it. So again, these front ones are way more difficult than the rears, at least on mine, but they are definitely in there pretty freaking solid. So once you get this thing going, then this front hex adapter actually slots into the axle. So you want to grab it and just kind of pry it off like that. And then your whole piece is exposed. And now getting this out is very hard. I found the best thing to do is to kind of work this thing back and forth like that, which will expose the bearing. And then what you can do is you can actually pull that outside bearing off and give yourself a little bit of working room to get the actual hub, the axle, whatever, out of this knuckle hub because it is beyond tight. And these bearings on here, even though they spin, they are freaking beyond tight on here. Yep goes back together easy and once you get it off it seems to be easier to take it on and back off but it might not be a bad idea to kind of reduce the size of this hub real bad so a little bit so i want to find out what bearing is actually crunchy that one there actually feels pretty good so and that one feels pretty good so this thing really just might have been just all together, like just way too tight or something. So now we should be able to just reach in here and pull this entire thing out. And I mean, man, it's like freaking jammed in there and everything is trying to come out at an angle. So again, it's kind of a, definitely a pain in the ass to get this apart. I ain't gonna lie. So give yourself some time and a little bit of patience. Once you get enough room in there, you can kind of get something in there and reach underneath down here and just kind of pry it up and out there. After many tools and a few cuss words, we have got it out and man, I don't know why in the world these things have to be so freaking tight. The bearing itself slots in there pretty easy so that's not really the problem and that bearing doesn't feel bad but i just think when you get everything on here together these hubs should not be this these axles holders should not be this freaking tight it definitely is putting an unnecessary amount of force on those bearings All right, so that's off there. And these things are, are these things plastic? Yeah, they're definitely plastic. I'm gonna sand mine a little bit to make things a little bit easier is to get in and out. Maybe that'll take care of some of that binding. So now that we got that done, what we're gonna do is we are gonna reach in here with a sharp hobby knife and we are gonna pull the seals out of these bearings. And then we're gonna take some bearing lube and we are going to lube both sides of the bearings. Some people like to clean them. I'm not gonna worry about that. This will be fine. 
And then we're just gonna make sure that they spin really well in our finger. And these bearings feel really good. I don't know why there was so much crunchiness and stuff. Maybe it has to do with that axle just kind of binding up against the plastic inside the hub. So I guess we'll see here shortly. See, getting this bearing even back on is just way more difficult than it should be. How does our hex fit on here? Is this super tight or is it kind of loose? It's not awful. Let's just sand it all down a little bit more, even where the hex goes. The hex is all held on by the axle, so really doesn't matter to take some of this material off. It's not gonna hurt anything. In the end, it might make our life a little bit easier getting these bearings on and off in the future if we ever do this again. All right, that was a little bit easier. Not great, but definitely easier. So let's put this entire assembly back into the hub and see how things go here. I'm going to inspect mine for damage here. So in this case, what I ended up doing was sanding this entire piece, even all the way up here onto the top where everything slots in and then applying some lubrication. I still can feel a little bit of binding and it just, there's just something catching that I can't really figure out what it is. The inside of the hub looks fine. These are low-see parts. They're, they are not the same lengths, probably, of what is on a Grom, even though we could probably find a replacement, I'm sure, but would have to do some measurements and probably just buy a couple ones to see what fits. I don't really feel like doing that. So when I put it back together, it's definitely better than it was. At least I can get the bearings on and off easy now. Man, that was uh, pretty crazy getting this thing in and out of here. So again, it, take your time and you might have to uh, use some force. So we're just going to, again, just lube the crap out of everything here. And then we've already got our bearings in there. And go ahead and slot this through the back side. It's coming in at an angle. That's in there, and then make sure our bearing is retained good. And yeah, that's kind of it. There just must be some excess material there on that that was hanging that up there. And not gonna say that that definitely couldn't have been uh, affecting the car quite a bit. That would have been on the right side. So it it's the side in oval that's kind of working a ton because there's so much weight transfer that's being done onto that side. So let's just go ahead and reinstall the entire thing. Now these hexes are slotted to go on here. So what I like to do is just take this main piece and kind of thread it in a couple spots and then take the hex and find the keys. And once it's keyed, you can kind of just hold on to the assembly a little bit and get everything started. And then just take your shock pliers and put them on the hex. And if you got another set or a set of pliers or whatever, just go ahead and tighten everything back down. Well, I ain't gonna lie, it's not as smooth as the other one was, but it is definitely doable and passable. So it is not like completely binding up all the way and everything. And when you redo these hexes, uh, you don't have to like take them all the way back down. So if you smash these things all the way up against the bearing, you're kind of doing a little bit of what we don't want to do. So maybe put them down a little bit. You'll see there's like a recess in there where the pin actually fits right into. So get that taken care of and then maybe back it off a little bit. So that is it for that part. Now we're on to the main drive shaft here. And this is pretty easy to get the seals off and all that kind of stuff. 
You can start at one end and then work to the other. Basically, there's a pin inside of here to get this stuff freed up and off. So what we need to do is find that pin and I'll have to put my magnifiers on so I can see. So we just slide everything down the shaft here like that. And then right there is our locating pin and we can just push that out and pull it through one side. And now we've got our entire shaft exposed. So we don't need that. We don't need that. So let's get that off. Let's get the other bearing off. I think some people have also gotten rid of those O-rings. Um, damn, I don't see. Huh. I literally don't see a shield on there. I have no idea where that would have came from. That's pretty crazy. Now we can lube all these bearings up. Shaft looks pretty clean. So basically what we're going to be doing is it looks like O-ring. Bearing. Spacer. And then gear and then bearing. So we'll take one of our bearings and we will place it back on the gear. And then there is our hole for the pin. So we will take that and stick that there. And we will align that up and drop the pin back through just like so. And then everything just slides right back up into place. And then that will all drop in there back into the car as one assembly. So now we're pretty much going to repeat the exact same thing on the other end, pull everything towards you. There's the pin. And if they ever come out with the Delrin spurs, that will be pretty awesome because that will definitely be a nice little hop up addition to these cars. Push that gear through the other side of the spur to get to that bearing. And we'll pull that one off there and we will rinse and repeat and get that done. All right, all back together in the end. Don't forget to take your red O-rings and put them back into those little races that they're supposed to be in. You want to make sure that you do that on both sides. We have all of our old bearing shields here that we can now throw into the trash. And at this point now, we are ready to start reassembling our Losi NASCAR, which is very exciting, because I would love to get this thing off of my bench. And we probably won't be doing nothing like this ever again with this car, unless it turns into some kind of super modified class where people actually start putting parts and stuff into it so make sure all this is snapped in there and seated appropriately and that's pretty much it we're good to go now some people like i did with my tto2 we can take a little bit of like lube and grease or whatever and just kind of stick that down there underneath where the bearings spin to keep things a little freer and then you can also take like black grease or something like that and put that in here on your output gears, let's call them. I'm not going to do that right now just because I want everything to be clean. It will be a little bit quieter. So maybe I'll take like a little something thick, like, yeah, let's just do it now. Let's just take like a dab of like 5,000 associated diff fluid and we will just drop that in there on each output gear and then that'll get all mixed up on our differentials all right so that's all good to go everything feels good and smooth and wasn't horrible before but you know this should help out a little bit and now we're gonna put everything back together. I do have a new steering set to put on there. This was an original 
uh, Grom part, and we'll go ahead and put that on there instead of the old Losi one to see if that does anything for like the recentering and stuff. I doubt that it will, but when I go ahead and put everything back together, uh, that's pretty much the plan. And I'm gonna put it back together with the original stock electronics and everything. I might throw a new set of tires on it and then try to work on the servo and get it in the best position for oval. So, cause that's pretty much what I really mainly want to race with this right now. We have some extra oval races coming up and one of the classes since this caught on so much is gonna be low C NASCAR. So it's why I wanna run it. I mean, typically I'm running my sportsman truck and I'm kicking ass with it right now. Um, it's as fast as it's ever been. And I don't really have any maintenance to do on it before Wednesday, except for changing some, cleaning up my front kingpins and changing out, relubing the kingpins themselves and maybe polishing them, making sure all that stuff's good. I don't need to cut any tires or do anything fancy schmancy when it comes to the extra oval stuff. So now all I got to do is put this damn thing back together. Yeehaw. So appreciate each and every one of you guys. We will talk to you later. Peace.